Kate Leth is a Canadian comic book writer who bragged about the fact that she works for Marvel Comics. She also made this tweet a few years back in which she said that men are trash. After her piss-poor attempt to apologize in which she showed that she also harbors anti-white racist sentiments as well, other women responded to her by saying that she shouldn't apologize because men are indeed trash. Replace the words like men and white men with words like blacks, niggers, or Jews and ask yourself would these statements still be considered acceptable? I am fairly certain that Marvel Comics or any other comic book publisher wouldn't hire a man who publicly says that women are trash and that this man would be fired from his job if he made said tweet during the time he was employed. In fact, I would go so far to say that these same standards would be applied in plenty of other fields. Since 2015 and appearance of the movies like Star Wars, The Force Awakens and Mad Max, Fury Road, anti-male infection of nerd culture became more prominent and worse and many other long-lived and respected franchises became infected and targeted by this anti-male virus. Things haven't changed for the better ever since, anti-male ideologues like Kate Leth and Kathleen Kennedy are still allowed to operate since men stay passive and keep rationalizing their cowardliness with stupid memes like get woke, go broke. Companies like Gillette prove that they are willing to take a dump on their male customers because of the fact that Miss Andrew is trendy and becoming more and more mainstream. Bullying. The Me Too the movement against sexual toxic harassment. masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. It's been going on far too long. We can't laugh it off. Who's the daddy? What I actually think she's trying to say. Making the same old excuses. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. But something finally changed. Allegations regarding sexual assault and sexual harassment. But she says he's a and there will be no going back. Because we, we believe in the best in men. Men need to hold other men accountable. Smile, sweetie. Come on. To say the right thing. To act the right uh, way. Bro, not cool, not cool. Some already are. In ways big. Yo, men. And small. I am strong. I am strong. But some is not enough. It's not how we treat each other, okay? Okay. Because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. On the other hand, men praising commercial made by a guard watches in response to Gillette shows that many men have slave mentality, approving appraisal of their utility and disposability and defining men as sacrificial animals. What is a man? Is a man brave? Is a man a hero? Is a man, is a man a protector? Is a man vulnerable? Is a man disposable? Is a man broken? Is a man trying? We 
we see the good in men. Like someone in the ProMail Collective said, if men were told to enter gas chamber because their body fat was deemed as important and needed to society, men would happily enter the said gas chamber, knowing that their body fat is deemed valuable to society. I am not one of those men who laughs at the feminists because they're supposedly saying funny things, feminists are operating by the hearsay principle that lies told too many times become true by spreading false information and statistics in order to defame men and propagate anti-male hysteria, which resulted in men losing their jobs solely based on the accusations made by women, among many other things. In the Second World War, Nazis operated by the same modus operandi which led to Jews being treated like subhumans, Yet feminism is allowed to exist in the mainstream and operate as political movement with an ability to influence laws, even when these laws lead to blatant discrimination and worse treatment of men. Many feminist organizations including the world's largest feminist organization called National Organization for Women protested against alimony reform bill being passed, this bill would have helped fathers enslaved with lifetime alimony and set equal amounts of time with each parent as default. Thanks to feminists, women again got the best of both worlds, privileged access to jobs granted by affirmative action, while still having the ability to seek high-status men to provide for them, all under the guise of equality and employment of usual we are for equal partnership and against lifetime alimony slash provision for women, but what about the children, gaslighting tactic. I will link in the description of this video the article that covers feminist rally against this alimony bill and the National Organization for Women's Statement of Purpose written by Betty Friedan, which both defend female parasitism, the latter does so by employing gender-neutral language as a mask while propping up female domestic parasitism as homemaking and childcare. Another term feminists like to use is unpaid labor while the other variant of this can be seen in feminist propaganda video which stars Daniel Craig and Judi Dench, actors from James Bond 007 movies, in which Judy blatantly lies about women doing two-thirds of the work while being paid significantly less. We're equals, aren't we, 007? Yet it is 2011 and a man is still likely to earn more money than a woman, even one doing the same job you have a far better chance of entering political office or becoming a company director. As a man, you're less likely to be judged for promiscuous behaviour, which is just as well, frankly, and hardly any chance of falling victim to sexual assault. And unlike the 30,000 women in the UK who lose their jobs annually due to pregnancy, there would be virtually no risk to your career if you chose to become a parent or became one accidentally. For someone with such a fondness for women, I wonder if you've ever considered what it might be like to be one. The world has changed, but the numbers remain stacked against us. Women are responsible for two-thirds of the work done worldwide, yet earn only 10% of the total income and own 1% of the property. It's not just about money and power. Every year, 70 million girls are deprived of even a basic education, and a staggering 60 million are sexually assaulted on their way to school. We're afraid to walk the streets at night, yet some of us are even more afraid to return to our own homes. At least one in four are victims of domestic violence. And every week, two women in the UK are killed by a current or former partner. So, are we equals? Anyway, feminism goes far beyond some purple-haired men-hating lesbians, as some men love to put it, it is a de facto hate movement with a political power, supported by both men and women, actively and passively. 
when it comes to both feminism and misandry, there needs to be better organized and more vocal pushback, any rationalization to be passive is futile. Self-correcting cycle is nonsense, passivity only guarantees that things will get worse. Repeating the phrase get woke, Go broke is pointless when anti-male ideologues keep hijacking male spaces and move to new male spaces once they're done with cannibalizing previous ones and when companies are willing to roll with the anti-male flow. This new form of pushback shouldn't stop with boycotting companies that employ anti-male bigots and push anti-male propaganda, but also include organized protests and vocal demands to companies that people like Kate have no place in mainstream or in public sector. People that slander men with lies, including those who propagate false information and statistics need to feel legal ramifications as a consequence of their actions. Feminists shouldn't be allowed to poison the minds of young kids with their toxic anti-male ideology, feminism has no place in the education system. Also, we need to fight against feminist NGOs getting tax breaks or government funds. If you live in a country where hate speech laws exist, these need to be applied against people who openly spout misandry, including women and feminists. After all, if men are punished for spouting hateful rhetoric, same standards should be applied to women in the name of true equality. New form of pro-male activism needs to go step further beyond mere negotiations and debunking feminist slanderous lies for umpteenth time and also go against misandry in general, in all forms. Fuck feminism before it fucks you to hell with double standards and misandry. Pro-male vanguard out.